Hello everyone. I welcome all of you on this massive open online course and today I will cover metamorphic rocks, their nomenclature, texture and protolith. The name of the most metamorphic rocks are based primarily on texture, structure and mineralogical characteristics. The most striking features which stem a rock as metamorphic is its fabric or structures and texture which is the foliation oblique lineation. Therefore, the widely used rocks names are cyst or niece. The group name is also modified by a term which indicates a specific texture, for example, organesis. The group name can be further modified by the name of an index minerals placed as a prefix to the group names. For example, a garnet cyst, the name of the index minerals or key minerals indicates a specific condition of metamorphism. If a rock is almost monomineric, it may be named after the dominant minerals, for example, quartzite dominated by quartz, marble by calcite or dolomites, serpentine almost entirely made of serpentine and the like, but most rock contain three or more minerals. These minerals are listed with hyphen between them and placed in order of increasing amount that is model percentage before the group name in the given example of garnet chloride hornblende cyst the mineral hornblende must be in a maximum amount than chloride or garnet and in cordite, garnet, selenite, biotite, niece, biotite is in maximum amount while cordite is in the least amount. While an index minerals indicates a specific metamorphic condition, the abundance of principal metamorphic minerals indicates a rough guide to rock composition. In the two examples, in the preceding sentence the first rock indicates parent of basic composition while the second indicates peltic parents these criteria are basic of field and or laboratory studies of metamorphic rocks in other nomenclature some terms invoke genetic assumption and employ such prefix such as para and ortho which are used respectively for sedimentary and igneous protolith. para -nice and ortho -nice, or para amphibolites and ortho amphibolites are the term used in this sense but it is indeed difficult to resolve unless more intensive geochemical studies are undertaken. Hence the genetic terminology is avoided in naming a rock. If original protolith parent rock is still clearly recognizable, we at attach the prefix meta to the rock names. For example, meta basalt, meta granite, meta church, etc. Thus, we see that there are four main criteria for naming metamorphic rocks. First, nature of the parent materials. Second, mineral assemblages. Third, rock texture. Fourth, any appropriate spatial name. Common metamorphic rocks on the basis of structural terms and mineralogy, the common names of metamorphic rocks are slate, a very fine grained rocks characterized by slaty cleavage in the field, a slate can be distinguished from cell by the absence of 
earthy smell when we moist it with our breath it develops from cell and tends to break cleave into thin flat seat slate is the lowest grade metamorphic rocks that form from a cell parent rocks slate is made up of microscopic mica minerals usually muscovite these are flat minerals that are aligned parallel to each other this orientation of the crystals causes slate to break easily in one direction this property is called slaty cleavage cell is made of clay minerals and most clay are not very stable under high pressure and temperature as cell begin to metamorphose heat and pressure cause the clay minerals to slowly recrystallize into flat mica flecks slate breaks in a preferred orientation because the mica crystals are flat and tend to break along the flat direction during metamorphism the micas grow with their flat dimension oriented at right angles to the maximum pressure this process lies all the micas up and gives slate its characteristic cleavage direction slaty cleavage is one example of the metamorphic texture called foliation while means layering which means layering the color of slate depends on the chemical composition of its parent cell or mudstone red slates are rich in hematite and iron oxide green slates contain a significant amount of chloride purple slates are stained by manganese oxides and black slates contain carbon rich organic materials phyllite a fine grained and very fine finely schistous rock that develop from slate the foliation as surface of which is due to the presence of sericite the cleavage surface so lustrous seen due to coarsening of mica sericite oblique muscovite and chlorite the cystosity may be thin segregation quartz rich bands which may al alternate with micaceous bands phyllite is a low grade metamorphic rocks consisting mostly of fine grain micas but the micas crystals are larger than those in slate and are large enough to be just barely visible to naked eyes phyllite typically developed from slate at temperature around 300 degrees centigrade other common minerals found in phyllites beside muscovites includes chlorite green graphite dark gray or silvery and sometimes garnets red or brown the characteristic wavy layered glittery texture of phyllite is another example of foliation in metamorphic rocks cyst a strongly foliated and commonly lineated rocks which can be easily split up to plates of few millimeter thick the cyst are usually medium to dark colored and consist of lamellar minerals like micas chlorite talc or prismatic minerals like amphiboles and selenite etc if cyst contains more quartz relative to the sum of the phyllosilicates which collectively are nearly 50% the rock is called quartz mica cyst low model amount of plagioclase nearly 10% in cyst distinguishes them from gneiss cyst is a medium grade metamorphic rocks that can comes from a variety of parent rocks although 
the most common cysts are formed from cell parents this means that they comes from they comes through a transition from cell to slate to phylite to cyst cyst is characterized by an abundance of coarse mica minerals grains such as muscovite biotite and chlorite the mica grains are large enough to be seen without magnification usually they can be flecked off with a finger nails cyst display cystose texture which is similar to phyletic texture except that the minerals grains are coarse enough to be seen with the naked eye cyst typically shows little or no segregation of minerals into discrete bands or layers with metamorphic minerals especially garnets are commonly found throughout cyst green stone or green cyst green colored low grade metamorphic rocks dominated by the presence of chlorite actinolite and epidote minerals that may show cystose textures or non cystose textures to qualify the rocks are green cyst or green stone this rocks form mainly from metamorphism of a basaltic igneous parent rocks and is marked by the presence of chlorite mica which gives green cyst its characteristic green color blue cyst a metamorphosed mafic rocks containing large quantities of glaucophen blue amphiboles and has a pronounced cystosity nice medium to coarse grain foliated metamorphic rocks marked by bands of separated minerals usually alternating light and dark colored minerals known as nisos structures nice is a high grade metamorphic rocks only formed deep in the crust beneath active mountain chains such as volcanic arcs at subduction zones its prime distinguishing feature is gneissic textures formed by segregation of minerals into distinct and commonly colorful bands it splits parallel to a surface generally along mica or hornblende layers into plates or blocks of few centimeters the term is almost exclusively used for rocks containing abundant feldspar and quartz unlike cyst the nice contain bands that are dissimilar in both texture and mineral composition a field based classification is on the basis of alkali feldspar or plagioclase feldspar for example two mica plagioclase nice or muscovite biotite alkali feldspar nice the prefix ortho or para suggest its derivations from igneous or sedimentary parentes as temperatures approaches 500 to 700 degree centigrade very hot but below the typical melting temperature of the rock the minerals in cystos recrystallize and segregate into layers dominated by one mineral type the extremes of heat and pressure this stabilize the more felsic minerals breaking them into ions that readily migrate within the rock and recrystallize in distinct light colored single minerals types containing large grains of more stable felsic minerals such as quartz or feldspar meanwhile ions freed from other minerals such as biotite amphiboles and pyroxenes from intervening layers of dark mafic minerals this process of mineral separation is known as metamorphic differentiation the distinct layering of dark and light colored minerals is referred to as nisic bendings a striking form of foliated layered textures when looking at layers rock 
in the lab or in the field we contain not to mistaken gneissic bendings for layering in sedimentary rocks these are two very different processes and textures the two main differences that sedimentary rocks layers are rarely separated into separate minerals from each bands a characteristics of gneisses and that the texture of sedimentary rocks is typically one of individual grains with cements in the spaces not the interlocking crystalline texture of gneissic bands organ gneiss gneiss containing abundant porphyroblast porphyroclast enveloped by the foliation to give the appearance of eyes organ in germans gaulites a granoblastic rocks that is rich in quartz and feldspar and almost devoid of hydrous minerals lenticular to tabular composition layering may be present granulites are equivalent of acid plutonic rocks but those containing quartz perthite potassium feldspar and hypersthein are referred to as charnokite amphibolite a dark colored rock composed principally of hornblende and plagioclase usually with quartz and epidotes foliation due to alignments of amphibole's prism is less conspicuous than in cyst the qualification ortho and para suggests its derivation from igneous or sedimentary rocks eclogites a dense but rare rock of basaltic composition whose crystallization at very high pressure and temperature gave rise to an assemblies omphacite solid solution of diapsite and jadeite mainly an mg rich garnet with no plagioclase common accessory minerals are quartz kyanite amphibole geosites and rutile hornfels a very fine grain granoblastic rocks which has a blanked appearance similarly to a clink fired ceramics these rocks are dense and compact and flittering looking and form at high temperature and low pressure by contact metamorphism granophels are non cystose rocks characterized by isotropic granoblastic textures and mean grain size more than 0.1 mm if less than 0.1 mm the metamorphic rocks called hornfels marble a crystallized carbonates rocks composed of calcite or less commonly of dolomite serpentinite a green black or reddish rock composed dominantly of serpentine antigorite crystallite etc it is formed by hydration of igneous or metamorphic pedrotites olivine rich ultra basic rocks soapstone magnesium rocks a pedrotite or dolomitic limestone composed of talc with minor carbonates chlorite and trimolite like serpentinite the soapstones are also formed by metasomatic alteration of the protolith scarn a granoblastic rocks that is rich in calcium silicate minerals such as grassolerite andradite epidote diapsite vesuvianite and wollastonite the small amount of carbonate distinguishes scarn from marble scarn formed by co2 metasomatism at contact of limestone an igneous intrusive body usually of granitic composition scarn contain trace elements of economic importance like molybdenum and w quartzite a monomeric rocks composed predominantly of quartz and shows granoblastic texture impurities in original protolith sandstone may form aluminous or ferro magnesium minerals magmatites a megascopically composite rock made up of biotite rich dark bands 
and quartz feldspar rich light bands which appear to have formed either by metamorphic differentiation or by partial melting in high grade metamorphism several type of magmatites are distinguished depending on the mutual relationship and geometric shape of the dark and light bands less familiar rocks leptinite used mainly in france a light colored metamorphic rock consisting of quartz feldspar without mica but may contain a notable amount of garnet leptite used in sweden and finland a compact fine grained granular metamorphic rocks of granitic composition it is composed of quartz and feldspar with subordinate mafic minerals helifinite used in sweden a compact fine grained granulose rocks of horny aspect often banded its mineral constituents are quartz feldspar mica and chlorite persinites a green cyst rich in poikiloblastic assemblages of albite and epidote without amphiboles and chlorite kingsite a garnet rich quartz poor mica gneiss with graphite plus minus cordite selenite and spinel conolite an almost massive mica poor or free selenite garnet quartz feldspar rock mostly with graphite as accessory minerals garnet and selenite together exceed feldspar in model amount charnokite a hyperthin bearing granite gresen a new metallic or metasomatic altered granitic rocks whose feldspar is replaced by mica and often rich in fluorine bearing minerals like topaz etc note if a metamorphosed igneous rocks is still persistent its original fabric the prefix meta is used for example metabasalt or meta dollar diorites metamorphic textures metamorphic rocks preserve in their minerals a long history of the metamorphic process that affect them while the mineral assemblages preserve information about pressure temperature and fluid composition their texture mutual grain relationship give information about stress strain temperature history of the rocks many textures in metamorphic rocks result from growth of new minerals or recrystallization of pre-existing minerals of parent rocks that was subjected to deformation stressed at elevated temperatures the development of texture is controlled by the nature of minerals in the rocks the new minerals in a rock undergoing metamorphisms are formed in solid state accordingly the term crystalloblastic is applied to all metamorphic textures in which the crystallized minerals so relatively regular shapes the term blast either as a suffix to crystal or to a textural clearly suggest the origin in solid state condition the term texture in general has a wider includes microstructures covering all aspects of the microscopic arrangement and interrelationship between grains the term textures sensual lato is thus equivalent to the term gefuge german terms for fabric if the rocks was subjected to isotropic stress s1 equal to s2 equal to s3 at high temperature we get granoblastic textures with the development of equidimensional grains with faces making an angle of 120 degree this is ideally found in monomineric rocks composed of calcite marble quartz quartzite olivine dunite or plagioclase and orthosite 
Under the influence of anisotropic stress at high temperature, the rock are likely to flow and develop planar foliation. Slatic cleavage, cystosity, along which reactions take place, arranging the minerals in low energy sites, the primary foliation stratification designating as S0 is seldom observed in a metamorphic rocks because continued deformation transposed the foliation cystosity of one or more generation degenerated as S1, S2, S3 and so on. However, in large grade metamorphic rocks, the S0 as original compositional layering between sedimentary and volcanic sequence is recognizable. In contrast, the bending in high-grade gneisses and migmatites may not be related to primary bending alone. Therefore, the first things that characterizes a metamorphic rocks is the presence of primary foliation S0 due to continued deformation the S0 is transposed and appears sequentially as cystosity of one or more generation for example S1, S2, S3. The compositional layering or bending is the outcome of alignments of inequidimensional grains this planar structures S1 or S2 or even S3 is visible in hand specimens as well as in thin section as cystosity with or without granulation parallel to XY planes of the strain ellipsoid. In the initial stage of metamorphism, the micaceous minerals are too fine grained to be visible with unavoided eyes and define a foliation called slaty cleavage. When these minerals coarsen with progressive metamorphism, the foliation is called cystosity and the texture is called cystose, texture, particularly prominent in the cyst, for example, biotite cyst, chloride cyst, green cyst etc. The cystose texture is due to more or less parallel arrangement of micaceous or prismatic minerals. The cystose texture is further specified by the term lepidoblastic texture if the cystosity is defined by preferred orientation of micaceous minerals. If the prismatic minerals like hornblende or epidote define the cystosity as in amphibolites or hornblende cyst. The term knee metoblastic texture is used. Note that the term as surface introduced by European geologist is almost synonymous with cystosity but has wider connotation and includes all type of parallel surface irrespective of their genesis. Nisos texture is used when quartz and feldspar dominate and tend to concentrate in the alternate layers of flaty minerals. Some niches so larger feldspar grains propheroblast wrapped by micaceous to appear as it called organ in German. These niches are called organ niches. Based on the shape of the minerals, three terms are used. First, idoblastic, when the minerals grains or crystals have well-developed faces. Xenoblastic, when the grains are without of any shape. And subidoblastic, when the minerals are of medium shape, intermediate between one and two. On the basis of size, textural terms, granoblastic, when there is no size difference and the metamorphic rocks is composed of equal size grains having boundaries at about 120 degree 
called triple junction. As stated already, another term, propheroblastic texture, is used when one or more minerals have grain size significantly larger than that of the matrix L minerals. Many index minerals, for example, garnet, stolite, etc., in peltic cyst are propheroblast. Recrystallization favors the growth of larger grains at the expenses of smaller one because smaller grains have high surface area for their volume. In the growth of large minerals, the atoms need only to move across the grain boundaries, grain boundaries migration. Without applicable transport, again large crystals grow from a nucleus during metamorphism reaction in a rock subjected to increased temperature and pressure. The product of reaction begin to grow from a nucleus. Once stable nuclei formed, there is a chemical potential gradient between the reactant materials and the product nucleus. Because of this gradient, materials will diffuse towards the newly formed grains of the product's phases, causing them to grow at expense of reactants. Here, large crystal form by coarsening of number of nuclei during growth. The rate at which the nucleation and growth proceed depends on different factors, diffusion rates, concentration, gradients, etc. The propheroblasts are further specified by the term poikiloblastic texture. If the propheroblast contain numerous inclusion, either as remains of reactant phases or a part of the matrix minerals, these inclusion persisted similar and they yield evidence of an early metamorphic history of the rock. Care must be taken. However, to distinguish these from the inclusion appearing in the propheroblast by cut effect or by hydrothermal alteration of enclosed minerals, quartz and ilmenites are common inclusions in garnet propheroblast and so a recognizable orientation. In certain rocks, we have microstructures in which the crystal lie in diverse directions showing a crisscross structures most commonly shown by minerals with columnar habits this is called dissociate structures oblique textures in the last few years metamorphic petrologists have realized the significance of shear stress or ductile shearing in the development of textures and microstructures in the regional metamorphic rocks. The rocks formed by shearing could be foliated to be called myelonites and the phylonites or non-foliated due to non-foliated to be termed cataclysites and fault brescia. The resulting textures are first cataclastic textures. When the minerals are crushed, bent and polygonized and various Retrograde individual fractures cut several crust grains. Second, myelonitic texture. When the grain size reduction is much more than in cataclases, but or all features are similar to the cataclastic textures. Blastomyelonites texture is used when large grains may be surrounded by finer grained crust materials. The large crystals are called propheroclast, different from propheroblast, larger newly grown crystals and the texture is called propheroclastic texture. When large relict crystals are surrounded by shear bounded grains, relict textures. Inherent textures from the parent rocks gives useful information about the origin of the metamorphic rocks containing relic textures. Two important relic textures clearly inherited 
from igneous parent rocks first blasto optic textures metamorphic rocks showing relict optic texture of original igneous rocks which was subjected to metamorphism second blasto porphyritic textures metamorphic rocks showing relict porphyritic textures secondary textures these are also seen in metamorphic rocks first symplectite intergrowth when two or more phases so intergrowth in an irregular and complex manner the texture is termed symplectite intergrowth of simply symplectite most symplectites are associated with high grade metamorphic rocks especially in the gamolites where intimates intergrowth of minerals pairs sometimes tri minerals intergrowth are common symplectites are considered the direct result of decompression during uplift during which high grade gamolites assemblages become unstable commonly encountered symplectites are cordite plus quartz or cordite plus quartz plus hypersthein as breakdown of garnet opx plus plagioclase symplectites after cpx plus garnet plus quartz opx plus spinel symplectites after olivine plus plagioclase symplectite generally occur at boundaries between reacting minerals and are often referred to as calafitic rims the calafitic rims or corona are reaction rims in which a minerals core is more or less completely surrounded by another minerals the symplectite or corona structure is the result of the rapid uplift uplift thermobaric evolution in which assemblages did not reach equilibrium it is need a detailed identification of intergrown minerals mirmekite is also a special type of symplectite in which quartz and plagioclase are intergrown perthite texture unmixing of alkali feldspar during cooling from high temperature to give rise to x solution intergrowth of plagioclase albite and potass feldspar texture as indicator of time relation between deformation and metamorphism regionally metamorphosed rocks are generally subjected to two or more deformation phases each accompanied or followed by recrystallization of minerals through progressive metamorphic reactions it is matter of great significance to understand the link between the phase of deformation and recrystallization of minerals occurring as a result of mineral arrangement in the low energy sites during protected period of deformation metamorphism that is orogeny in pure shear regime the planar surface slaty cleavage cystosity are parallel to the axial plane of folds that develop with the deformation at elevated temperature at high temperature continued deformation is controlled by the plasticity of the rocks during which the elongation occurring parallel to s3 direction and shortening parallel to s1 are accommodated by shear planes that are located to 45 degree to the principal stress so in the simple shear regimes where deformation is non coaxial both cystosity and cleavages are often formed and need to be numbered as s1 s2 etc it is with respect to the prominent cystosity that tectonic significance of the porphyroblast poikiloblast is understood the study of their inclusions defining internal cystosity abbreviated as si as against the external cystosity se defining the matrix is very important in deciphering the time 
relation between growth of minerals and the deformation events. Use of propheroblast. Propheroblast can be syntectonic or synkinematic, pretectonic or prekinematic, or posttectonic, postkinematic, with respect to the most common cystosity in the rock. The main cystosity is often superimposed by one or more deformation phases and can be recognized as transposed foliation which may undergo further deformation and hence may be mechanically reoriented and so microfolding, kinking, etc. or may even be formed a new with a different or similar orientation as the previous cystosity. Syntectonic propheroblast have grown simultaneously with the deformation of rocks. Such propheroblasts show a spiral pattern of their inclusion or SI and it is called a snowball texture because the mineral during growth was rolled by shear along the cystosity. This interpretation has been a controversial topic over the years. Alternate interpretation is that the cystosity rolled into new orientation without the crystal being rolled at all. But this is a research topic for later studies and left here without further comments. But it must be remembered that a syntectonic crystals often has oriented SI aligned inclusion fabrics but more often cores of syntectonic crystals are densely included where the rims are largely devoid of inclusions. Syntectonic crystals show spiral inclusion fabrics and when the inclusions are straight they SI sharply discordant with the external fabric SC. Often the SI in marginal part of the syntectonic propheroblast passes out of the crystal into SC without a break. But if the deformation outlasted the growth of propheroblast, there will be a discordance between SI and SC. Pretectonics propheroblast, in this case, the internal fabric SI of the crystal is likely to be discordant with SE and the foliation often wrap around the propheroblast because its behave like a rigid body while the matrix was being deformed. Beside the angularity between SI and SE, the pretectonic propheroblast has also cracked and pressure shadow and wrapping of foliation. Pressure shadows are area of coarsely crystallized material, generally quartz, that develop in region around the large crystals. Since this region is shielded from the maximum compression, stress during deformation as depicted in a sketch. On the right hand side, the pretectonic crystals are characterized by first fractures and or budinas, second pressure shadow as log strain areas where new minerals preferentially crystallize because of the strain partitioning around rigid large crystal and third kinking due to subsequent deformation. D undulose extension due to distortion of the crystal lattice. Post tectonic propheroblast its features will be as if the crystals has overprinted an already existing S surface cystosity. Consequently, the inclusion trials SI are parallel to and continuous with the external cystosity SE. Foliation is seen to about against the late crystallized propheroblast. Post tectonic propheroblast can also be shown holistic structure if the static 
blast over prints a strain slip cleavage existing prior to the mineral growth.